You might have heard in the news this morning, there's a camp happening in Creswick right now, and it's for young people who stutter. Apparently it's the first of its kind in Australia and the second time that it's running. The camp's director is Rich Stevens. We'll talk with Rich in just a moment. Uh, we've heard a bit from uh, some of the children who are attending. There's, uh, I think, 19 of them. Have a little bit of a listen to Leo and what he had to say about Stutter Camp just before we talk to the camp director. Fun how you get to speak the way you want to speak. Mm. But if I'm speaking somewhere like like big outside side end of camp, then sometimes I feel a bit n- n- nervous. And at camp, do you feel that nervousness or does it just go away as soon as you get to camp? Yeah, it sort of just like disappears. It's gone. <laughs> like the first step you take in- into this room here, dining hall, anything, <laughs> it just dis- disappears, yeah. That's Leo, and uh, a little later in that interview, Leo was promoting his and his brother's band, Potting Mix, but I didn't think I needed to play that to you. Rich Stevens is the camp director of Starter Camp and with us this morning. Hi, hi, Rich. Hi, hello, good morning. Thanks for your time this morning. How's it been going at the camp? It's been going great, yeah, it's been going great. Today's our, um, we're on day three, the full day, and the final day, the final kind of full day today, Um, so... An emotional day afterward, you know, we'll have a campfire tonight, an open share, but a great day planned. A couple of parents are coming up as well to see an art show that we've got the kids have been kind of prepping. But no, um, it's been going great, you know, um, a lot of kids making new friends, connections, a lot of, yeah, just kids just talking how they want to talk in mm. a free space, you know, in a safe space. So, yeah. Just, can you just explain that more about the kids talking how they want to talk? What What's different at Stutter Camp there than than in, in everyday life? Yeah, so I think in our space, um, the kids have as much time to speak as they need really and stuff. And the focus isn't on how they're saying their words. It's, you know, it's what they want to say because um, a lot of the children, you know... Um, you know, probably in school, um, in like in just the general society where they feel like they have to be fluent. They have to be fluent to fit in. Um, they have to change the way they speak to kind of fit in. And, you know, for, and for a lot of the kids, you know, who talk with the stutter, um, the tragic consequence of not, like, you know, of not kind of being found out as such because a lot of these kids may be bullied, may kind of fun up just because it takes a bit longer for them to say the words and they want to speak. So when they come here, they're just free to speak how they want to speak. And if they speak with a stutter, it's okay. No one's interrupting them. No one's making fun of how they speak. And when a child is talking, they have our full attention. They have our full love. And, and, and yeah, and they just speak how they want to speak. And that's the only ask I have of any kid who comes into this space. They just be their choice their true authentic selves and they will have our ears our hearts um yeah so there's a freedom in that how old are they so um the age range is eight up to 18 and we have the full kind of spread to the 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 spectrum here at camp as well so yeah they're they're the 19 kids of all those ages and um yeah so that the age range why, why did this start, Richard? How did it start? So it's, yeah, so, yeah, so like I'm a person who has a stutter and stuff and when I was in my early 30s, you know, I'm 40 now, but in my early 30s, um, yeah, I, I came across an organisation in America called the, um, called the, um, um, called the um, um, Stutter and Association for the Young and I just went over to volunteer um because i just saw the taglines and the taglines was every kid has as much time as they need to stutter and it's okay to stutter so i went over to the summer camp over there and i just found this community where you know these kids were just free to speak how how they went to speak and kids were connecting with other kids who have a stutter because you know especially in my kind of childhood and all the people i've met over the years adults who stutter when they talk about their childhood they never met another child kind of let alone yeah another person but let alone another child who had a stutter so there was lots of you know loneliness and isolation and stuff and as a kid that is all i wanted i wanted to meet another child who sounded like me so that's how it started really it started to just 
to provide this safe space where kids can just come and meet another child who stutters and, you know, and just be free to, you know, just be free to have this safe space where they can engage with kids, be kids, and just talk about all these other things that they're interested in instead of, like, unfortunately having to focus on, like, in other spaces that aren't safe to, to focus on, oh, I need to change the way I speak in this space because I don't know if I'll be accepted. Mm. So in these spaces, they're totally accepted. Now, now, Rich, as as we've been speaking, you're not stuttering. Uh, occasionally I can hear it, but it sounds to me like from what you've just said, you have to concentrate pretty hard not to stutter at times. No, so I, I don't know. Like okay. um, you're talking to me in a, in a period where today I'm kind of fluent. Yep. You know, if you talk to me in a couple of days, you know, it could be completely different. I don't use any techniques, and there's people who do use the technique. I just know for me, as a kid, when I when I had to concentrate 24-7 on how I breathe and the techniques, for me, it was just so tiring. Um, so I don't use it. I don't use the technique. And, and I think that's the... Yeah, I think that's the thing for the general world, what, what they don't tend to realise. You know, there's a range of... Um, there's a range of stutters. So like, some people have a strong one, some people don't. For some people it's there in every word, for some people it's not. And for people like me who don't have a, such a strong one, you, like, you know, every day is kind of different and stuff. Um, yeah, and there's some days I do a lot and there's some days I don't. But um, by me finding a community like this, I just, I just speak how I want to speak. And I'm now, at, you know, I'm in a position where I don't really care what anyone else thinks and stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. I've got a community, and that's what I want to bring to these kids and stuff. I want to bring to these kids that um, you do have a community and stuff. So, so like, and so, like, in your highest highs, in your lowest lows, it's, and it's them kind of knowing that w- whatever is happening in life, you've always got this space. As well as your family, you've always got this family now, this community, it will always, always have your back. Rich, lovely to chat this morning. Thanks for your time. Cheers, thanks very much. Thank Rich you. Stevens is the camp director. I think I'll let Elliot have the last word, one of the other participants at the camp. Well, I do know two people that do um, stutter, which is my principal plus my great-grandfather, except I've never heard them stutter. So it was really nice to um, hear one more person stutter for the first time. Yeah. Wow, so coming to camp was the first time you heard other people stutter? Yeah. What was that like? Uh, it actually was a really good feeling. Yeah, it's like, all right, so it's not just me. So far, I've made like 15 friends, so I'm pretty good. Plus, also, it's been pretty fun, yeah. That's a little extract of Elliot, another one of the participants at the Stutter Camp underway in Creswick.